What's up, New Beginnings Church? Happy Tuesday morning to you and welcome to our devotional series. Um, just some encouraging words from John chapter 14. But again, as I looked at it, I was like, man, I'm going to stay on this verse all, or this these verses. I'm going to stay on them all week long because in these verses, I really saw something I'd never seen before, not quite put it together quite like this, but I saw five ingredients to peace. It begins with these words in John 14, 1, let not your hearts be troubled. And there's every temptation in the world right now to be restless, to be stressed out, to to be anxious, to be angry even. So he says, let not your hearts uh, be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. We started yesterday with the idea that the first ingredient to peace is recognizing that peace is not the absence of conflict. Peace is the presence of a person. And Jesus is saying, I'm that person and I need you to trust in me. But look at what he says next. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. I want you to think about that again. So he says that first you need to recognize that peace begins with trusting in me, that peace is a person. But he goes, let not your hearts be troubled because I'm preparing a place. So the second ingredient to peace is recognizing that there's a a place. He goes, in my father's house, are there not many rooms or many dwelling places? And so Jesus is already trying to put the disciples at ease saying, hey, look, I need you to know something. This life and what you experience is not all that there is. No matter what pain or suffering or tribulation you go through, this is not the end. Death does not get the final say. Sin does not get the final say. My Heavenly Father gets the final say, and He has a place, a home for you, a dwelling place for you. Um, One of the things that I think about is, even to this day, right now, I have a bedroom in Greenville, South Carolina. Now, I think somebody else has taken over that bedroom, but my mom still lives there. And I think right now to this day, I could call my mom and say, Mom, I want to come home. And I know she would clean, and she never cleans unless company's coming over. But if I came home, she would clean just because I'm coming home. Mom, I love you if you're listening. And so anyway, but I know right now, and I I want you to know, I have this little weird sense of security because I know. No matter how bad it got, I could call up my mom and there would be a place for me. And I think that there's a peace that comes. Not Again, it always starts with the person of Jesus, but then it it follows with the idea that, no, no, I have a home in heaven waiting for me. I have a place. I'm not homeless, spiritually speaking. I'm not a wandering person on a journey with a backpack hoping I find a home or a place. I've already got one waiting for me. As a matter of fact, in Philippians 3, Paul says the same thing, and he actually uses the word citizenship. He goes, I want you to know not only do you have a home, you have a kingdom. You are the citizen of a kingdom, and your dad is the king, and you have a place waiting on you. So I want you to know in this life, no matter how difficult it gets, death and sin don't get the final say. I don't care what your circumstances are right now. I want you to know that peace is found in the person of Jesus Christ, but it's also found in knowing and remembering that there is a place, that I have a place in the family and the kingdom of God. I even have a place waiting on me in heaven, and that gives me incredible peace. Can I get an amen? Let me pray for you today. God, let us always walk with security and confidence in you, but in knowing that you've prepared a place for us, God, that you um, have opened up your home, opened up your arms. We are adopted into your family, and there is a place for us always, Lord, no matter what. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody say amen. Church, I love you. I will see you tomorrow.